Welcome to Larry Talks Tech. This is Larry, and we're going to be talking about how to set up an email alias. So first, let's describe what an email alias is. It's basically when you're using one email address in place of another one. All right, now that sounds kind of simple. So, so we'll give you some examples and also why you should use uh, an email alias. First one is just for privacy. So let's say you're shopping at uh, a food store. Let's call it XYZ Foods. And they have a loyalty program, and you can save lots of money there. Well, great. So you go to sign up, and you want an email address. So you have an email alias called Simply Silly Emails at iCloud.com, where your originating email is located. And you give them that address, and then the next day you start seeing some coupons coming through, and that's really great. And then you start seeing some junk mail from someplace else and it's wait a minute this is the only one you've given an email address to so you may know you've sold your email address to somebody else and this is ridiculous so at the end of the week you've got a hundred junk emails so the simplest way to resolve that one you can unsubscribe not simple because sometimes that doesn't work or you can go right back to your email server uh, in this case iCloud.com and just click out and, and delete silly emails at iCloud.com and you can go back to your email client and delete those and you'll get no more emails from that. Pretty cool. The next way that will help you is an organization. Let's say that uh, there's a wedding in the family. So you set up an email alias for Barbara Jean's uh, wedding at iCloud.com. So now all your responses come in to Barbara Jean's wedding at iCloud.com on your originating email site. They all go together and you can look at the headers or you can do a search and group them all together and then and go through them, but you've got them organized. Easy to find. And some clients like Spark, they'll actually set up, uh, you can actually set up a separate inbox. So they, they route through the originating inbox and then the software itself routes it to the inbox for, for the alias. All right, so. All you have to do, though, is when you do this, you just have to remember that when you delete it from the uh, any emails from the inbox that was created for the alias, they're still around in the originating inbox, and that could be good. So there's a couple of, of examples of how to use an alias. You can make them temporary, you can make them long term, and the final really good benefit for this is that they're free. So if you have a small company and you're and you're setting up. Uh, uh, inboxes, maybe you have one for customer support or something. You could do customer support dot my company at iCloud.com. Uh, you would get the emails coming through for your in your originating account, and then you would take and uh, forward those, or they're automatically forwarded to a setup uh, inbox for uh, the alias address. Okay, so now that, that saves you. Of going out and paying for an extra email address. Also, it gives you a way to follow up because you're seeing everything that comes in. So you can take the guy in charge of customer service and you see him the next morning and say, hey Tom, I noticed you got an email for our new Aardvark 101 and the uh, flangey uh, washer was, was failing. Uh, what, what did you tell the customer? I imagine the guy in customer support would go, wow, who did that? <laughs> How did that work? Okay, so good follow-up tool, good organizational tool. Okay, any free tool. All right, so that's, that's some ways to use email aliases and, and what they are. So now let's go see how we can configure and, and uh, set the things up. Okay, now we're ready to set up our email alias. And I'm going to give you an example of doing this. And we'll do it on iCloud.com. And that will be on the, the server, the email server. And then we'll do the client uh, on a MacBook Pro. And that will be uh, using the Spark as, as the email client. All right, so before we get started, there are a lot of, obviously, different programs, uh, email clients, and there are a lot of servers. So generally, the processes for setting an email alias up on all of these are the same. It's basically going into preferences or settings and finding the alias account and, and uh, kind of follow where the little boxes lead you. Uh, the 
clients can offer different options and we'll talk about one of them here as I was when we set up the spark so if, if you're just using the the server after we set the server up you're done you can enjoy using your aliases that way and then if you have a client on a local computer or iPad or iPhone or tablet or whatever uh, and then we'll go ahead and set that up and then you can start using your aliases all right so we're going to kind of theoretically here hop on our web browser and uh, go to uh, icloud.com and uh, log in and then go to the mail app click that and then on the left side of the mail app you'll get this window and in the lower left corner you see that red arrow there you click that gear and then a box opens up and you see the preferences you'll click that and then you're going to go to this window here, which is your account window, and you see above it uh, on the left side in the little left panel, it's redacted, but you'll see uh, a couple of email addresses on the other one. And then you'll click uh, Add an Alias, and then when you do that, you'll go to this window, and here you'll put in your alias names, which would be like, you know, Larry Talks Tech uh, uh, dot 1964 at iCloud.com and then you put in your full name it'd be Larry whatever my full name is and then you hit OK but you're not done yet you want to go back to this window and go over to the third tab from the left at the top there where it says composing and click that now the window that comes up I'm not showing it it, it was I have a number of email accounts on there and plus aliases and this, and uh, it's redacted, but it, it, I thought it was too confusing, so I'll just explain it. So uh, after you click Composing, there is a box in the center of the window that comes up, and it is a Send From box. It has a listing of all the email accounts you have on there and your your uh, uh, aliases or alias. Make sure that the new ones you've just added, the new aliases you added, are clicked, and this should allow you to both receive and send emails, which is pretty cool, the send part, send emails from the original uh, email client or email address that you're using. Uh, sometimes that will not work. So it really depends upon your email uh, server if they let you do that or not. This one does. And, and from Spark, I can send and receive emails using my uh, uh, alias uh, address and remember again that all of your emails are going to flow into the original email account that you have it's going to flow into its inbox okay all right so that's it uh, once you've got composing done and, and you've got those boxes checked to, so that you in the send from box you are now done with that so we can get out of that and then uh, we want to go to spark and get it set up so uh, on your local computer, uh, you would uh, load the email program Spark, and then in the upper left corner where of the uh, top menu bar, Spark will be there. And you click it, and you want to, in the drop-down box, click Accounts. And once you click Accounts, this whole thing opens up here. And I just go, I would go through, and, and on that top uh, set of... Uh, menus there uh, make sure the accounts is clicked on the left panel you see a bunch of redacted things there those are all email addresses uh, so you want to take and click the one that you want to add the alias or aliases to click it and then on the third arrow over that you see click alias and when you click alias this window opens up and on this window you want to click the plus button and if you see up in the very top underneath the alias you'll see name and email that opens up and you put in the name you put in on your email server and then you put in the new email alias address there and that's it you're done you've got it it's all set up so just as kind of takeaways re remember that you may or may not be able to send an email from your 
uh, email alias using your email alias it depends on your server your mail server and also depends on your mail client if it allows it to do that also some of the mail clients like spark will allow you to set up a, an email box for your alias and how, and how it works the the email as normal say the alias email as normal goes into the original inbox and then it's automatically forwarded to the inbox of the alias okay so it's just reading the server and uh, reading the header rather and sending it to the the newly created inbox for the alias which is cool and that same email is in both places and if you erase it in one it will not erase it in the other you have to delete it in both places so a little bit of a pain but it does provide some uh, some good organization for the emails and again some of them do some of them don't all right we want to thank you for stopping by larry talks tech i hope this uh, video was helpful uh, if you want to see future recordings please uh hit the subscribe button if you have any questions please uh, fill them out in the box below there and we'll get back to you as quick as we can so thanks again for stopping by i want you all to have a good day